Over the past few years, I've been realizing how we're living in what I call a para-religious belief system. What has happened is that while we're no longer obligated to believe in one mono-omni superbeing, we yet sustain all manner of other beliefs. And if you wish to be free in our society, you must believe them. I think we need to remind ourselves that the innate truth or value of a belief doesn't stem from its sacrosanctity, its place beyond question or inquiry. Problematic examples abound in this culture, but in hopes of keeping you watching, I'll begin by referring to other cultures. Acting on your innate homosexual inclinations where homosexuality is prohibited can get you imprisoned or killed. And you're not seeing, at least I'm not, pride parades in Riyadh. They're not allowed to exist yet. We need to think back to our own past and reflect on how we ourselves prohibited homosexuality and how very likely it is that oceans of people suffered in silence, thinking of themselves shamefully, thinking themselves defective. It's not like they could look at certain 21st century countries for a counterexample. At least today, People in most countries can usually look over the fence and see that we've nominally stopped persecuting sexuality on the basis of gender, and that the sun rose the next day and we ate our breakfast cereal in front of the TV. I repeat, nominally stopped persecuting. But perhaps our pride parades will inspire pride parades in the Riyadh of the future. Based on our experience with homosexuality, I think we should be loath to put things beyond question. I mean, if the thing is so self-evidently ludicrous to question, why should we have to police it? We don't hear much about how we persecute time cube believers. Why should we affix the scarlet letter? Well, I believe, and perhaps you do too, that we need to be able to live on this planet without killing each other. I mean, it's tempting to suggest that someone who advocates killing other people should always be stigmatized. But that stigma could backfire. Hear me out. You've probably seen the emergence of a new scarlet letter, climate change denier. It makes me sad, not because I believe that anthropogenic climate change is some kind of hoax, but because it makes climate change both a creed and an all or nothing thing. It makes it unsafe to say that there might be a panic, that it might be overblown, and it undermines the moral high ground because we're painting the person as another rather than addressing their beliefs and ours using our faculty of reason and our access to scientific methods and thinking, the very things that are supposed to be behind holding the position in the first place. Let's try a few of these. Climate change denier. Holocaust denier. Or, for a bemusing twist, 9-11 truther. How fucked up do we have to be in order to make truth a pejorative? I hasten to add that I don't think I fit any of these categories. But this haste that I have to use doesn't reflect that I don't fit in the categories. It reflects that they're stigmatized. It's a lot like how straight men go out of their way to be not gay. Similarly, many of us are not climate change deniers, not Holocaust deniers, and not 9-11 truthers. These identities shape our reception to ideas and to evidence. Assuming we don't outright reject the information, it will be amended, cherry-picked, formatted, qualified, truncated in order to fit. Everything has to bow to our identity of not being a climate change denier, not being a Holocaust denier, not being a 9-11 truther, being a Christian, being a neo-pagan, being a Muslim, being a feminist, not being a homosexual, not being a pedophile. And then, when we castigate, exile, or even execute the transgressors, we reinforce our beliefs being a matter of identity rather than of reason. In a way, we give fuel to those we despise because our violent or paraviolent behavior betrays that we are not motivated by reason or evidence. We become the true believers that they are. And it's all a clash of creed rather than a meeting of minds willing to dabble in reason and evidence. So what should we do? Well, for now I'd settle for don't listen if you don't want to, don't engage if you don't want to, 
Criticize if you disagree and have the energy, but don't suppress. If we want to have meaningful freedom, we have to be able to express what we believe to be true. When we suppress, we create a layer of truth that is upheld by authority or fiat. And we know how destructive that can be. We should be too smart for this. Okay, so what about neo-Nazis? Well, the same rule applies. Our persecuting them is not what makes them wrong. And I very much doubt that our persecution is going to convince them that they're wrong. And it might inspire people to wonder what all the fuss is about. It's almost like we're synthesizing diamonds through high temperature and pressure. What will be left over is a pure expression of that which we hate. So I believe that the thing to do is to let go and live the alternative. Let the ideas die by not paying attention. Don't distill or purify by suppressing. Unless you actually kill all of the people you wish to suppress, there's going to be an ugly rebound, and you usually can't kill all of the people. And if it's something in, for example, our sexuality that you're suppressing, it's just going to emerge again anyway. Write Samuel Butler in his satirical poem, Hudibras. He that complies against his will is of his own opinion still, which he may adhere to, yet disown, for reasons to himself best known. I came to it through Dale Carnegie, who writes it as, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still, in the context of a chapter called, You Can't Win an Argument. I'm against things like how in Korea, the South jams the transmissions of the North. I'm not inclined to believe much of anything coming out of the North. But from where I'm standing now, I feel like people should be allowed to see it. It's one thing to dismiss or ignore people. It's quite another to silence them. It does get a bit problematic, though, when it's one voice that everybody in the originating country that's not in jail purports to believe in. But if our identity, our institutions, our systems are so fragile that a few missives from RT or the Korean Central News Agency will shatter them, maybe we deserve what we get.